Hello! I am Mac, at least for a day, and everything's going to be okay. This is a demo of a VR game called Moss. Uh, it's unfortunately not the first time I've played it because these demos stop gameplay recording as soon as the demo ends, so I'm having to re-record this. So I'm sorry you're not getting to see my fresh reactions to the game, but this intro area looks like Hogwarts, but I'm pretty sure it's this game is not connected to Harry Potter at all. It's just your typical castle library, and the game is reading this book in the library. So I, this floating orb you see is my controller, and you, you use it to manipulate things in the game. So I move my controller onto the book, I pull the trigger button, and I open up the book. So that's a really cool feature of this game. So I open up the book, and then I turn the page. Your time has come at last, dear reader. While we began this tale long ago, we hope it is yours to finish. But this story is not yours alone. No, it is tied to another. And the journey you take together could change the fate of both our worlds. Shall we begin? Right, so this game has a really neat pop-up book aesthetic to it. So this is like the inside of a tree, and that's your character, that little mouse. And here comes the guide of the game. Mysterious purple spark. Hey kid! Kid! Wake up! Hey kid, over here! I know where your uncle went. <laughs> I'll show you. You're twofold now. Very important. Bring that glass and your sidekick too. We're going to need them. And your sidekick too. So this game likes to break the fourth wall. It refers to me as his sidekick, and like later the mouse kind of looks at you like it's thanking you for stuff, so. Apparently the mouse can see me looking down on him, but anyway, so like I said, Will this. Hey, Starling, wait. So I guess my mouth, my character's name is Will. Um, and so yeah, it's got this really neat environment. Looks like a pop-up book. I can move my mouse around it but later I'll also be manipulating things in the environment to help him progress. So here's the outside. The neat thing is I can stand up. I've never met a starving. In campfire stories, they often meddled in the lives of mortals. And when they appeared, mischief followed. So I can stand up and I can look around the whole kind of diorama of the world. And then I can also, of course, move my character around it. This is a area I can't go to yet. It's not in this demo. So we follow the mysterious purple spark thing. Passage through the eastern gate was strictly forbidden. But despite her promise, Quill knew in her heart that Uncle Argus needed her. Strictly forbidden things are meant to be broken in video games. There's these little collectible scrolls for some reason. I don't think they do anything in the demo. So anyway, I use my controller, the orb, to grab the gate and open it for him. Will demanded answers. Starving, you can't just barge in here with your riddles. Where is he? What do you know? 
So apparently my character is looking for his uncle. Don't know why he's missing. And why the purple star thing is leading me to him. Trouble your uncle's heading for is the kind only you and that silent giant up there can yeah. get him out of. So I'm the silent giant, apparently, so they can see me. It's very fourth wall breaking. So anyway, I grab this, move it out of the way. And I grab this one and move it. So my guy can get through. Then I can climb along here. Then I move these back. Whoops. I really like moving things around in the environment like this. But, I mean, I guess since I can manipulate things in the environment, it wouldn't make sense that they can't see me. Otherwise, it'd just be a mysterious force moving things with no explanation. But apparently I'm reading... Urge the starting. Forget to tuck your ears in. Apparently I'm a character in the book, even though I'm reading the book. Or maybe it's like a never-ending story situation where, you know, the characters in the book can... can perceive me. <laughs> because it's a magic book. Apparently these purple sparks can make portals. Okay. If I fall in the water, I'll die. Or my character will die. Is you can see there's an there's an axe over there. One thing I like this area is full of like rusty armors and weapons, so that um, it's kind of some environmental storytelling that they don't really address, at least in this demo. Oh, and that's a deer over there. I was really shocked when I first saw that. I thought that was really cool. So anyway, I lift these up so he can get through. It's cool how my orb can splash in the water. There's a helmet, rusty piece of armor. Nope. Let me get this collectible just because I don't. There's no reward in the demo for collecting these, but it's a thing I can show you. You can see there's a there's a shield right there. Another helmet. There's a squirrel up there. Just on the other side is the Meyer, the starving assured her. There's a good chance your uncle's still there. It's funny how the uh, the narrator is doing all of the game's voices. Because it's it's like a person telling a story and just doing the voices of each character. But yeah, that squirrel's got like a saddle on its back. 
I'm guessing maybe in the full game you'll be able to ride on a squirrel. That would be pretty awesome. You don't get to in the demo, though. So yeah, let's look at all those swords and shields and armor. Did you hear that? The starling seemed anxious. I've ruffled enough leaves in these parts. I can't be seen with you. I'll catch up with you later. Just don't go and die on me. <laughs> so um, this marsh reminds me a lot of the dead marshes in Lord of the Rings, where there was some huge battle, and then there's all these dead bodies in the marsh. Oops. Here we go. So, we've got purple thorns and a rusty sword. What do you think is going to happen? Yeah. So, a cool thing, I can use my orb to heal my little guy. And see, then he <laughs> did like a thank you sign to me that that was the first time I realized and noticed that the characters uh, can see me. Okay, so simple little puzzle here. Move the block onto the panel. And when I first recorded this, it I spent my time racking my brain trying to figure out how to get past these thorns until I finally realized I could just attack them and destroy them. Kind of glad I had to do the video over so that I didn't have oop, all this part of me struggling to figure out how to get past these thorns when it was a super simple solution. So, like I said, it's really cool. You can stand up. You can look down inside the diorama if you can't see the mouse from one perspective. Okay. So we gotta go get the obligatory collectible. Seems to be little pictures of something, but I don't know what. This is a lot of fun. I like this game. And it's got a cute little mouse protagonist. <laughs> and there's this statue of like a warrior mouse. That is really cool. It's like... It's like, is there some kind of history of warrior mice in this world? Because all these, like, giant swords are, like, from, you know, humans, probably. But then we've got the statue of a warrior mouse. So maybe it's like Narnia, where you've got warrior humans and warrior mice intermingling. Okay, so we got a big circle and a big gate. What do you think this is? Yeah, I called that the first time I came here. I was like, oh yeah, it's a boss fight, duh. And so we got kind of a dodging mechanic. I have to dodge, dodge and then hit it in order to damage it. So it's almost like Dark Souls, except not hard at all. At least not right now. If I let these guys hit me, then I get that whole damage status. And I can heal my little guy.
There we go. Mini boss complete. <laughs> he did a little fist bump. He didn't see it very well. A whisper echoed through the trees. Fought like someone who has stolen our champion's power. So, that is the demo. I need to hurry and end the video before the footage is lost. But yeah, really cute game, really fun mechanics. I might actually buy it someday. So, I have been Mac. Thank you for joining me for a day. And remember, everything is going to be okay.